Hey everybody, it's Pam and Bill at Country Living Newbie Custom Decor in Spring Hill, Tennessee. We are going to have some fun today doing a live video on next steps on our T-Rose dresser. So I started this um, probably a couple weeks ago and I've uh, been working on it a little bit off and on over the past couple weeks. We haven't had a lot of time to paint lately so uh, it's, <laughs> it's taking way, way too long to do. Um, but actually it's kind of good because it's uh, letting me be a little bit thoughtful about what next steps are and what I want to do on it. Um, so the base color of this is Dixie Bell's Tea Rose and we're going to do a little recap of what we've done so far on this and kind of where we want to go. And I'll also talk a little bit about, um, not really a philosophy, but how, how I go about doing a project like this, being fairly new to furniture painting. I know we um, have a lot of new folks out there. I get a lot of questions on our page about how to do things, being, being new, and how do I get started. And I actually have a group um, called Country Living Newbie Custom Decor <coughs> Group. We have, I think we're up to 58 members in it right now. And I think, um, I think that group is actually geared for a lot of new painters. So I'm going to share how I go about starting projects, how I prep things, what I've learned. We, a lot of times we're doing things for maybe the first or second time in our videos. Uh, and, and part of our goal is to show you all how easy Dixie Bell paint is to use and also the redesign with Prima products that we carry. Um, so, you know, many of them are, are super forgiving. Um, some of them take a little practice, so you can kind of learn by watching us which ones those are um, and let us make the mistakes for you. Okay, so... Um, which we do. <laughs> we do plenty. <laughs> In fact, I made one earlier today and I'll show you what it was. Um, so anyway, this um, is a super old dresser. It was um, pretty nasty and dirty. Um, this is this is what it looked like all over um, before we cleaned it with white lightning, filled in a lot of the um, kind of dents and bumps and nicks uh, with Dixie Bell's mud. So that was the first time I had used that for furniture repair. I've used it for raised stencils, but never for uh, repairing furniture before. And I didn't, I wasn't trying to go for perfection on repairing this. I was just really trying to smooth out some of the big nicks and um, uh, imperfections in it and a lot of the imperfections we just left because that's what we you know gives these pieces character. So one thing I did learn when using the Dixie Bell mud and I used I used the white mud on this dark um, this dark wood and painted over it with tea rose. Um, I bossed it as well so I'll, I'll show you um, and tell you what boss was all about. Um, but the Dixie Bell mud worked very very well. It dried quickly. Um, the only thing I would say is it creates a lot of dust when you sand it. So um, just be prepared wherever you're doing that. I mean, if it's just a little um, maybe hardware uh, a hole that you're trying to patch up, that's not a big deal. But we were doing like big flat surfaces with a lot of mud and, and sanding it off, and like the dust was incredible. So um, worked very well, but pretty dusty if you're doing a large surface. So hi to Christine Gordon. Hey, Christine. Sissy Cohen. <laughs> hey guys. And somebody named Melissa Reed. <laughs> hey, Melissa. And she, she likes the tea rose. Tea rose. So tea rose is my absolute favorite pink. It's like um, it, it almost has like a little bit beige undertone, I think, but it's not like like pink pink, right? It's kind of a more soft um, pink. So um, we decided when when we were cleaning this, the rags that we were getting um, after we wiped it off with white lining were like this disgusting, gunky brown, black, green, just gross. And no matter how much I cleaned it, the rags kept coming back that way. So that's pretty much a sure giveaway that this piece is probably gonna bleed through your paint, whatever you do, whatever color paint you, you put on there. Something from the wood, those tannins are probably gonna come through. So we decided to go ahead and use Dixie Bell's Boss. And Boss comes in um, several different sizes and then two different, um, I was going to say flavors. <laughs> Don't drink it. <laughs> Two different um, colors. So there's a clear, and, and the clear looks white. Okay, so it goes on white, which is nice because you can kind of see where you've been with it. And then there's also a white. So if I was going to be painting this piece white, I would have used the, um, the white boss because that would actually prevent bleed through and give me better uh, ease of coverage, right, with not so many coats of white trying to cover this dark wood. So I use clear on this. I use two coats. And I've had the base coat on probably, 
a week, um, and there's absolutely no bleed through at all. So two coats of boss, I sand in between. Boss can be a little bit gritty, uh, so when you feel it, it, it um, and you don't have to sand in between, but it, it gives the paint like almost a little bit of tooth to hang on to if you have a little bit of a slick surface too. Um, but, it, but it can feel a little bit gritty. So I use a 400 sand paper in between. And when I say sand, you don't, like, you don't want to sand your boss off. You really just want to hit it and smooth it out. So probably shouldn't say sand, more kind of knock down the brick in it a little bit. So clean with light lightning, um, repair with Dixie Mud, two coats of boss, two coats of T-Rose over the entire thing. So that's kind of where I was at this morning. And this is a uh, tea rose. So it's a very, and we're not really gonna be painting with tea rose today, <clears throat> but I will show you what it looks like. And I don't know where you're at on the camera, but. I'm behind it. <laughs> so it's just it's, a real pretty pink. You probably can't see it too yeah, well. Yeah, color's, color's not coming out too good. Not too good, okay. It's my favorite pink. We did a. Um, you can see it pretty good on the, on the, piece. the piece, but not in the jar. Okay. Karen so, Lucas is watching. Hey, Karen. There's a name. Yeah. Hope all is good at Oak Hill. <laughs> if you're still there. So, what I've been trying to do lately on every new piece like this is try something new. So, if you're new to furniture painting and you're, you watch all these amazing furniture artists out there, and I could name a ton of them, and many of them are Dixie Bell brand ambassadors that you guys have been watching, um, and, and they do incredible, incredible work. And I watch them all the time, right? So I watch many of their videos, and then I try to pick like one technique that I want to try on a piece of furniture. So I'm not gonna take this ginormous piece of furniture and blend four colors because I watched two videos by Brush by Brandy, right? I'm just not gonna be able to perfect that on this piece, right? Blending takes some practice, um, and many people make it look really easy, but it is something you have to practice. Same thing with the transfers. So the last dresser I did had that huge transfer on the front. That was not my first time doing a transfer. First I did it on a cabinet door, right? And then I did it on just a little drawer front. So I try to um, pick something small to start on and then work your way up. And then as you feel good about um, putting your transfers on, then maybe on the next piece, you're gonna do a transfer and you're gonna try a two color blend. So that's kind of how I'm approaching learning all these different techniques because I want to try everything, I want to use everything, but you can't do that all at once. You kind of want to pick something, get good at it, pick another thing, and then you can start combining techniques. So on this one, my goal was to do stripes. I've never done stripes before. Pink and white is so hot right now. A lot of people are doing um, the stripes down the sides of the dressers. So actually that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna go right to this big panel and do a, I don't know, four foot stripe. And then I thought, I'm not even taking my own advice, right? I would probably have crooked stripes. I probably have bleeding, who knows? Uh, bleeding of stripes, not my own bleeding. <laughs> Although, who knows? So I decided with this, I was gonna start with stripes on the little drawers because to me that's manageable. If I screw up and something awful happens, it's, it's not a big deal to fix it. Where if I screw up on this huge panel, I'm repainting, I'm sanding, all that stuff. So again, I'm not very good with patience, but I think with something like this, to save yourself some um, anguish down the road, just start, start small. Okay, so there's three drawers on here. I did these stripes earlier. The kind of tape you use to do your stripes is very important. So I spent about the last hour and a half touching up the paint that I peeled off when I took my uh, pick my tape off. I didn't have the green or blue frog tape, so I used uh, masking tape. Just typical masking tape, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I just couldn't wait, I, <clears throat> so I used it. And a lot of it came out fine, but much of it pulled the paint off. So I had to re-sand it, re-tape it, repaint it. Um, so use the right thing first. So this time I'm using this purple tape, which Bill tells me is the best. So well, it, it's, it's good. You know, <laughs> it's, it's good. It's a good frog, it's like frog tape. It's super thin, like it's very thin. And um, it's scotch and it says for delicate surface, gentle removal, 
um, painter's tape. <clears throat> oh, washi. That's the type of paper. It's not real thin. Yeah. Yeah. So use something that's made for something like this. So here's here's another tip. When you first put your coat, but when you put your tape on, wait twenty four hours after you paint. Yes. To pull the <laughs> tape to put tape on fresh paint. Yeah. So <laughs> we may have the same problem here because again, I finished these drawers. Um, I think I did the last coat today. Actually, it's all kind of running together. Um, so you know, paint needs time to bond to the surface. Just because the tape, the paint came off when I pulled the tape, doesn't mean my paint doesn't work or doesn't stick. It's it takes time to bond, right? So um, definitely wait a while. Make sure your your paint has time to adhere to your surface. So I'm going to show you just how to do some stripes on the end of this drawer. I didn't want to torture you doing 40 stripes across the whole drawer. Um, so I went ahead and did these. We'll, we'll do it from start on the end and then we'll go back and paint and finish those up. So when you do stripes, I mean you can, if, if you want your stripes to be even, you know, you can start in the middle, work your way out, do all that measurement. I didn't, that didn't really matter a whole lot to me. I really just started on this end. It doesn't bother me that you know I ended up with a small stripe down there not a big deal but if that's something that you want to have equal stripes that's kind of something you have to plan out okay I just didn't feel like planning so you could also start in the center that. yeah and, and then work your way work out your from way either out. side and then it'll be even right right so anyway I didn't feel like breaking up a measuring tape so that's why okay so that is the lack of patience you were <laughs> referring to earlier okay <laughs> So when you start, you want to take uh, just a small piece of tape, and so I started this one on the end, okay? But we're going to start it here, just pretend this is our, our beginning. And I would recommend that you do not say to yourself, oh, that one looks just a little bit crooked, but that's okay, I'll catch it on the next one and straighten it out a little bit. Um, I did that um, somewhere over here, and every time you do that, each time it's a little more crooked. Okay, so you're not gonna you're not gonna catch up with yourself. So just get it on straight the first time. So your next piece is gonna. So this is kind of your spacer. The next piece you want to lay right next to it. And then you take up your spacer and put it next to the piece you just laid down. And you do that all the way across. You can thank me now for saving you of, from watching me do that 40 times. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. Right. Move your head. Sorry. Cut, retake. <laughs> At least you don't see the grays now. <clears throat> Got my hair color. <laughs> no, gray. no manatee gray in this hair. <laughs> nope. Looks good. <laughs> okay, so here's our last one. $300 later. <laughs> Move your head. Oh my goodness, it's, I, I, it's hard. Okay, so there's our last one. <laughs> And then you just want to kind of rub down the sides. So we want to make sure that, that we do not get any bleeding of our paint when we put our stripes on, because there's going to be nothing worse than doing all this and your stripe color bled under the tape. So two steps in this, just make sure it's nice and, nice and tight to the paint. And then whatever your base color is, which is tea rose in this case, Take a little bit of that color on your finger and rub it along the edge. This is going to seal the edge and will keep our white paint from bleeding underneath. Is there a reason why we're using our finger and not a brush? 
I find you can kind of rub it in a little better. It's a little flatter than with the brush. You, you can use a brush, um, but you, you might have a little bit of a raised edge uh, between your stripes. So this, I just feel like when you rub it in, makes it nice and flat. And it's fun to finger paint. <laughs> yes? Um, yes. Yes. Imagine if I had to do 40 of these, too. It would not be fun. Someone told me that... So you have, you have paint all over your fingers, and I have construction adhesive. <laughs> Bill and I have no fingerprints right now. <laughs> <We> <laughs> I, can't, can't, I can't get my phone to turn on. We can't turn on our phone. <laughs> well, now I have the new iPhone, so mine uses my face. So as long as I don't paint my face, I guess I'm okay. <laughs> My phone wouldn't let me use my face as an identifier. Was it scared? It was too traumatic. Was it scared? <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's going to dry pretty quick. So we're going to start... Oh, I forgot it. Hang on. I forgot the paper plates downstairs. So the color of the stripes is fluff, which is Dixie Bells. One of their whites, it has... Um, it's a soft white. It has a little bit of a gray undertone. So it's not that um, pure white like cotton. So there's fluff with a little bit of gray undertone. There's buttercream with a little bit of yellow undertone. And drop cloth has a little bit of beige undertone. So you have nice variety of whites to choose from. We're gonna use Dixie Belle's flat, small brush. So it's a high quality synthetic brush. And this is the small one, I guess it's it's about an inch. I always wet my brush a little bit. The paint is a little bit thick, which I like. We're gonna wet our brush and then we're just gonna start doing stripes. And you wanna kinda be careful if you're doing your stripe over this edge that you don't leave a little wad of paint there right on the edge so smooth that out it's okay to live there not paint there on the edge yes <laughs> you can live on the edge but don't paint on the edge good to know see we offer free advice as well as these tutorials advice for the soul <laughs> So, I mean, I don't think stripes are, are necessarily that difficult, but they're, you know, they're time consuming. Bird outside. Bird out. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, sorry. Hey. Distracted. <laughs> it's supposed to be squirrel. Uh, there's a squirrel, squirrel. too. <laughs> and I'll look at the squirrel. There's a squirrel. We're, um, we're at our store in Spring Hill, <laughs> Tennessee, and in the backyard, it's like all day long, I just... Well, I shouldn't say this because you'll think I do nothing all day long. <laughs> but right behind the register, we have a bird feeder out the window, and we get squirrels, um, birds. Uh, we have dueling rabbits out there. Squirrels with mohawks. Yeah, the squirrel. The squirrel puts his sits in the bird feeder and puts his tail flat over his head, and looks like he's got a squirrel mohawk. It's adorable. So has everyone heard <laughs> about all the new Dixie Bell products coming out? I have. You have? <laughs> Ad nauseum? <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually some pretty cool products coming out. We're going to show you one of them in a little bit here. Um, there's a new metallic line. So the old metallics uh, work very well, actually. There were three colors, gold, silver, and copper but it was a two-step process on those. So you put your base coat on, and then to kind of get that nice metallic 
sheen, you had to put a top coat on. So it worked, worked good, just a two-step process. So now they've come out with Moonshine Metallics. That is their new name. And it's a one-step process. They come only, right now, they only come in the 16-ounce size. The other ones came um, in an 8-ounce size. Um, honestly, I forget what they retail for. I don't have my notes up here. Um, but there's five colors. There's a rosé, which I actually thought about doing the stripes in. It's um, almost like a tea rose um, metallic. It's really pretty. So there's rosé, and it's rosé with a Z. Rosé. See if I can remember all these. There's a steel magnolia, which is kind of a, it's like a pewter color. Sissy Cohen apparently has seen these colors and she says she loves the new metallics. Oh, they're so pretty, so pretty. There is um, Wedding Bell, which is, this looks like a soft, Gold, yellow-ish. That's the way I can describe it right now. Um, there's a silver bullet, which is silver. There's gold digger, which is gold. Did I miss one? Is that five? Gold digger is gold. Gold digger is gold. I feel like I'm missing one. Um, also, they have new new voodoo gel stains. So two new. Voodoo gel stains. Um, Black Magic was in this um, release <coughs> that came out last year, and now they have White Magic, which I think is kind of cool because the other new one is denim. So we now have a denim, like a denim blue jean color, and a White Magic. So you can now do like whitewashed denim, just like. Um, and then there's a hemp oil, and then there's Big Mama's Butter. So that's what we're going to show you in just a little bit. A lot of folks have been asking for um, some type of furniture salve, so that's what um, <coughs> that's what Big Mama's Butter is. Not butter, butter, butter. And that comes in um, two cents, orange and. Suzanne's Rose Garden. And okay, we're back. Are we back? I think we're back. Are we back? Let us know we're back, guys. Someone, someone say, we're back. Yes? It says we're back. <laughs> I'm going to hit this with the heat gun because we're going to do one more coat. Actually, maybe what we'll do with all that is drying. Let's do another little fun thing. So the other thing that's kind of popular right now. Sissy says we're back. We're back? Woo! Okay, good. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to put on this dresser, and I'm still like, do I want to do a transfer on it? There's actually two doors that go in front of here. Okay, so this will actually not be seen. Um, and the doors had a beautiful molding on it, but it was, I guess it was like this. On the door, yeah, but it was similar. It was um, chip, not in good shape. <laughs> chip, half of it was missing. Yeah, so we just took the whole molding off and had the plain door. So we'll either put another molding back on, or we'll put a transfer on it, or a stencil, or something. So here's what we're gonna do next. Uh, stick and style. This is the door of the stencil, right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Look what we're gonna do next. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay, so we're going to use a redesign with Prima stick and style stencil on the drawer sides. So that's just kind of a nice little bonus when someone opens the drawer and sees that there. I just think it's so pretty. And this is right over the wood. Um, and then I used fluff, and we're going to use two different. Make sure I'm not going to ruin it. 
Okay. We're going to use two different waxes. So there's, and they're both redesigned with Prima. One is rose gold. And the other one is Milky Way Iridescent. Nice. Okay. And they both kind of go real well with the tea rose. So we are going to flip this drawer over. I just had a Milky Way. Did you? I did. Was it iridescent? Um, I couldn't tell you. It didn't look like it, <laughs> but it was dark chocolate. <laughs> okay. So the stick and style stencils come in a roll of 15 yards. They're pretty, um, pretty big. And I forget, I think there's, I don't know, six or eight of them maybe. Um, so I brought a few up. I wasn't sure which ones I wanted to use. Um, I brought up Calypso Lattice and Cornell Garden, but I thought they were kind of busy because we have, we already have stripes on the dresser. So I didn't want to get like too crazy. I just wanted it to be kind of something fun on the side. Ooh. Fire engines and spring something hill. Something going down. All right. So I chose... Royal and hopefully not a house burning down. <laughs> so I'm going down. Um, Royal and Garden. So it's not quite as busy as some of the other ones. And um, so if, if you're local and you come into our store, what I have done is um, put these into 12 inch or one foot strips. So you can buy just a strip of this. It's reusable. It's sticky on the back. And you can keep it on the back of um, some wax paper, or um, if you use a transfer, you can keep the paper that the transfer was on. And you can reuse this several times. So instead of buying a 15 foot roll, you can just buy a foot for your single project. So I know um, some of the other retailers do that. I'm not, sure, uh, not everybody, so you might wanna check and see if that's available to you. So all I'm doing with this is lining it up on the bottom, pressing it down, and I already, this is the same one I used on the other side of the drawer. Okay, so you, you can see that it really is reusable. I am not kidding you on that. And I'm pressing it down. And we're going to use fluff. And here, so I'm going to show you quite a few brushes tonight. These are the redesigned with Prima stencil brushes. And there's actually one more size that's big and chunky and fat, and I absolutely love it. If you have a big stencil you're doing, a welcome sign, or a big farmhouse, that you're done in like minutes. So um, that's the big one. Then there's this one. I think that's a two inch. This is a one and a half inch, and I think this is one or a half. I'm not sure. Um, so this is kind of the perfect size for this stencil. It'll get, it'll get it done very quick. They also make a brush set of some smaller ones. They come three in a pack. So there's one other middle size in here. So pre, both Prima and um, Dixie Belle make some really good brushes. Um, I think it's well worth it to invest in the brushes for whatever project you're doing. Uh, we're not gonna use this tonight, but I also <coughs> sell um, Paint Pixie brushes and this is their Dusty. And I just used this for the first time today. This brush is insane. It is awesome. It's a um, natural bristle brush. It's very firm. So the bristles don't move a whole lot um, when you paint. And it's, it's very skinny. And if you're putting on your first coat of paint, I did, I did the, um, the doors with this. And I was done in like no time. So it's a nice, um, long, skinny brush. Love it. And it's good for blending too. Okay, so we are gonna use this brush. And when you stencil, it is best to use a dry brush. Even with the adhesive ones, um, you know, there's less chance of bleeding, but you, you don't wanna take that chance um, of something getting under there. So don't use a lot of paint. You can always do a second coat. What's the technique called? Pouncing. Pouncing. Like Tigger. <laughs> and I'm not even too worried about full coverage on this. In fact, I kind of want it um, kind of light. Sporadic. 
because we're going to put those two pink waxes over it. I had thought about using uh, some chalk paste for this. So there's a Roy Croft Rose chalk paste that looked really pretty. And again, I know the color is not always good on camera, but it looks very close to the tea rose. My fear was these are, um, the chalk paste is good for a little bit of a raised stencil and the drawers are kind of tight. And I thought if I used a raised stencil when I closed the drawers, off comes my stencil. So I decided to go with this. A wise decision. What do you guys think about the sides? I'm still debating on some stripes on the sides. Just such a long panel, I'm afraid my stripe is going <laughs> to be a zigzag. Because you won't see the stripes here, so it's not, I don't think it'll be too busy. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to let that sit, and we're going to go back. That probably wasn't very smart, because... <laughs> Put it on the... Put it up there? Yep. Can you guys see? We'll put it on our fridge? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> we just roll with it. Sissy says our video keeps getting interrupted. So I'm not sure what's going on with our new provider. We're not, that's not the new one. We're on at and here. Are we still? Yes. <laughs> well, maybe we should go with our new provider. <laughs> Can you tell it's getting interrupted? No. Huh. It's not telling me. Well, that's not very fair. So here we're doing a second coat. So this is our second coat on our stripes, and then we're going to take the tape off very carefully, and we are all going to pray <laughs> that our paint does not come off. I'm even thinking about maybe doing a small stencil or transfer, I don't know, across the stripe and just something small, like in the corner. That's the problem with so many products to use. <laughs> you like want to use them all on everything. And I'm just lightly going back over this because you don't want to, once it starts to dry, you don't want to go over it with a heavy hand because you'll pull off what you started to put on and you'll get um, unevenness and some brush strokes. But I always like to kind of do a last, just real soft sweep of it to flatten any of the brush strokes out. Dixie Belle is self-leveling, so a lot of that's going to happen over time anyway. But I think the less you have to start out with. Are you on the downstairs internet? Yeah. You probably should have switched over to the upstairs. Is it going out again? <clears throat> it, it's not telling me, but... People are saying... Sorry, guys. We have, we, we have two um, wireless routers that we're trying to play with and figure out which one works best, depending where we are. And a lot of times we do our videos from downstairs, but the bigger pieces we have to do up here. But I know there's nothing more annoying than video going in and out, so I apologize. Almost done here. 
And I'm just kind of lightly going over where it's still wet, very lightly. And that's kind of a good rule of thumb when you're painting um, a large flat surface. You know, what, what's the most common question we get? You know, how do you, how do you reduce brush strokes? And the only way to really eliminate them is to use a sprayer. And of course, that's not something that's an option for everybody. So, you know, there's a couple things you can do to minimize and that's keep your brush wet, keep your paint moving, and then always, always do one last um, stroke down the whole piece. So don't, you don't wanna do, you know, if you're doing a, a large uh, side of a dresser, you don't wanna smooth down to the middle, lift your brush up, you know, and then smooth up or, or put it back on and go down. You're, you're always gonna see that line of demarcation. So take your brush very lightly and just go down the whole thing, one stroke. And I mean very light. All right, what do we think? I'm afraid. I'm afraid. <laughs> it's time. It's time. Let's see what we get. Oh my gosh, it's working. And it's ruined. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Looking good. Now we're going to show you how to start over. <laughs> <laughs> First, I'm going to go cry, pull some hair out, and do a shot of Tennessee Fire. <laughs> then we'll start over. So absolutely no bleeding whatsoever. Right? Absolutely perfect. So the key is doing that little rub of your base color. And, and would, you know, could you get no bleeding without that? Sure. But I think it's just a little extra insurance. And some people will even use um, like a clear coat to do that with. And that's fine, you can do that too. That will kind of seal off, seal off the edges. Shouldn't you be peeling it off like a Band-Aid? Well, that's what I did the first time. <laughs> and just like taking half your skin off when you do that, it took half my paint off. Man, when's the last time you shaved? Yesterday. Ooh, boy. <laughs> I missed one day and that's... Uh... <laughs> so how, is the video doing better now? Are we still coming in and out? Bueller. Perfect stripes, guys. Who's gonna go do stripes on something now? Someone needs to do stripes. Sissy says we're good now. We're good? All right. So Christine had to go, I think. She said she's looking forward to seeing the finished product. Have a great night. Christine's our Christine Gordon. Our new friend, her and Doug. <laughs> Doug saved us the other day <clears throat> <laughs> on Balloon Patrol. We had our one year anniversary on Saturday. So we had a big old party and grilled out. It was really nice. All right, so the purple tape seems to be, I told you purple tape. You're like, no, you just use the yellow stuff. It'll be fine. <laughs> you didn't even know where the purple tape was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know there was purple tape. I'm like, green or blue? Here's the stuff, it's purple. Oh no. <laughs> oh, as soon as you said something. <laughs> Dang it. Lousy purple tape that you recommended. <laughs> Told you not to use purple tape. <laughs> All right, well that we can fix. And why did it happen? Because you told me to use purple tape. No, oh, because you didn't wait for it to dry. Yeah, you so didn't that's, wait for it to... That's pretty, um, 
like peeled off so can you grab that sandpaper right there so to fix that we really need to and we might take some more off by doing this which is fine that's okay you gotta yeah. smooth out their edges yeah so we'll sand it down and we'll just touch that up you won't even know i i did not repaint all the stripes when this happened over on the other drawer i just sanded it and touched up the spot that i needed to touch up and you're going to want to um sand so you can't you're not going to be able to see this probably on the camera but there is a, a raised edge where the tape was and literally you just need to knock it down with the sandpaper. This is a 400. This is nothing. This is super fine. All it's doing is knocking the edge down so you don't see the raised. <clears throat> It'll leave a little bit of dust. You can just go over it with a damp cloth or a tack cloth. But it's, it's taking it right down so it's smooth. little bit more down there and that's kind of where I was having the problem on the last one near the edges I'm sorry I'm torturing you with taking all this tape off but I'm afraid the longer I leave it Cheryl Day is watching hey Cheryl Cheryl did you did you see your your project on AJ's video Go look on our page. I tagged you in the post. You are on YouTube and your tray table. I submitted you and she put it on. So Amy um, is doing kind of a, a monthly, I'm not sure it's monthly actually, I'm not sure how often she's doing it, like a spotlight on um, Dixie Bell retailers and their customers and some of their projects. So Amy is, um, from AJ's Vintage is a big time YouTube gal. Lots and lots. I think she's over 50,000 followers. She's got a lot of followers. She's an amazing, she's a Dixie Belle ambassador. She is an amazing furniture artist. And she is just beyond supportive of all the Dixie Belle retailers and our customers. So she did a video highlighting different pieces. So we submitted some. So um, my dresser with the big transfer on it got on and Cheryl did a tray table in our bring your own piece of furniture class. And it was the first time she had used a transfer and she painted her tray table and put a beautiful transfer on the top of it. And it is on the video. Look about the four minute mark on the video. You'll see, you'll see yourself. All right, last one. Not bad. Only one, only two, two little spots. Well, I shouldn't say that yet. <laughs> Easy touch up. All right. I love, love, love the stripes. So cute. So cute. Okay. <clears throat> so let's go back now and finish our stencil. I think, would it be easier just to turn it and do it here? Sure. Okay, so now we're gonna take, and there's a couple ways you can do this. We're gonna finger paint again. We're gonna start with the rose gold wax. We're gonna put a little bit on our finger and we're just gonna kind of rub it randomly. No rhyme or reason. Which is hard for you. No. And this is permanent. You don't you don't need to seal this on the side of the drawer. Oh, more sirens? Yeah. It's now going the other way. <laughs> All right. So let's kind of leave it at that. And then we're gonna take now the um, the Milky Way iridescent one is. You may not be able to see it very well. It's very, it's very iridescent. <laughs> so you 
kind of see right through it. It just puts a little bit of a glow and it, I don't know if, can you see it on my finger, how pink it turns? So it turns, it's a different color. Yeah, you can see it on your finger yeah. pretty good. And you guys are not gonna be able to see it on here. But once I take the stencil off, you'll see it. <clears throat> Again, we're just kind of being random, just to give it a little, little something something, a little peekaboo on the side. Probably shouldn't have said that. Freudian? Could be taken the wrong <laughs> way. Something you need to tell me. <laughs> Actually going back over and going a little heavier because I couldn't really see what I was putting on initially. Yeah, I think it looks better a little bit more. Sometimes more is better. You could also do this with a brush. You don't have to use your fingers. Just it's just more fun. And you don't have to clean brushes. Alright. Let's take it off. Yeah, usually brushes get clean and hands don't. <laughs> Are we ready? Ta-da! Nice. And so this is still sticky. So I will use this probably on at least one more drawer. I mean, as long as it's sticking, I'm going to use it. Uh, so let's, let's see. Put this back in without destroying it. Okay. Huh? Time. Time. Okay. Mm, I'm afraid. I think that might be too tight. Back to the camera. <laughs> Everybody yell at Bill. He's always yelling at me. Unless you wanted to. No, let's take it out because I want to show um, the butter okay. but, and how to use that. Okay. So let's take this drawer out and I want to show you real quick before we go Big Mama's Butter. Okay, this is Suzanne's garden, so it has a bit of a um, rosy smell. It is this consistency. So this is like a furniture, furniture salve, okay? So it's kind of this um, oily kind of... It's like a thick petroleum jelly, that's it. it looks like. That's it. <laughs> so you can use this a couple different ways. You can use it um, as an alternative to wax. Um, you can use it on plain wood just to kind of revive the wood um, and seal it. You can also use it on those drawers that stick so, you know, sometimes you're putting the candle wax on them and the drawers, because the drawers aren't moving quite right. You can also use it like that. So, that is what I did on this bottom drawer. I've never used furniture sack before, so I really don't have anything to compare it to. And I, I kind of went into it going, it's probably going to make it smell nice. Oh, that's the other thing. If you have a little bit of a stinky dresser or something with a little bit of an odor, this will help that as well. So this has kind of a nice floral scent, but it's not overpowering. Do we do smell vision smell vision Okay. Okay, so we're just going to rub this along the bottom. Now, the other thing you want to be careful of, in fact, <laughs> I already did it, is we're going to stencil this side. So this um, will probably prevent our stencil from adhering very well. So you can sand it. Sand it off. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll it'll dry too. Um, but right now it feels kind of kind of oily. Um, so I would say you want to use this. You know, just be careful where you're using it. You don't want to use it and then plan on painting right over it. But it rubs on really nice and smooth. Can you see? Can you see the difference? How it just kind of brings out the wood. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of shine. A little to shine. It. Yeah. 
and it smells really nice. So I'm gonna do that all around this um, drawer and all the drawers because I think it'll give it, it's such a delicate piece and then you kind of got this floral scent and you got the mm -hmm. little flowers on the side. I don't know, it just kind of gives it a nice, uh, nice touch. So this comes in the 10 ounce size. It also comes in a smaller four ounce size. So that is next steps on our dresser. Now we have to figure out and so where I put that on the bottom, I can, I mean, you can feel the difference. I mean, it's squeaking over here, but over here it's, it's like super smooth. So it just makes that Yeah, just movement. putting the middle drawer in was difficult. Yeah. And they're all like that, but now it, that top one yeah. goes yeah. in real nice. And this one too, I did that one earlier. Okay, so we're gonna end up doing um, both sides of this. We'll put another stripe on here. And then we need to figure out what to do with the rest of this beauty. So um, we'll get that part done and then we'll, we'll go on to next, next steps. So I put our link um, to buy Dixie Belle paint and to buy the Redesign with Prima products in the description. If you're watching on replay, give us a hashtag replay. Let us know where you're watching from. Do the things that you're supposed to do that we're not supposed to say. You know, <laughs> follow us and invite a friend to watch the video, et cetera. <laughs> so um, thank you guys, I know we went a little bit long. Um, we will hopefully see you again uh, sometime soon. Thanks all.